Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Time for another Fern Friday. Oh, and I have a special co-host tonight. His name is Cicada. He's really annoying. He's gonna be here with us off and on throughout this video. My apologies, just part of summer, and I know I need to change that light bulb. The bulb, the little screws are strips. I need to drill those out. And funny story, I actually already filmed half this video, but I was referring to the plant by mistake, just slip of the tongue, calling it an asparagus fern, which is a relative to the foxtail fern. The scientific name for the foxtail fern is the asparagus tensiflorus Myers eye. So that's, that's why I was fumbling there. Not a true fern, not at all, but that's the common name. It's what it goes by. So I figure that's what I'm going to refer to it as in this video, just the foxtail fern. So the foxtail fern, like I said, asparagus densiflora Myers eye. They average around two feet tall, three feet wide, pretty drought tolerant plant. They can take a very good, good, good amount of sun. They spread very, very, very quickly, basically invasive if they're growing someplace where they're hardy. And these are also toxic, which is one of the things that sets them apart from a lot of other ferns, right? One of the great things about ferns is house plants is the toxicity, and I, I'm so sorry about the cicadas. Maybe it's bothering me more than it's going to bother when it's coming through the microphone. I don't know. I enjoy them. It's like the sound of summer, right? It's a it's a very summery sound. When I'm not out here filming a YouTube video, it doesn't bother me one bit. I'm gonna try and accept the noise and let it pass through me. It's gonna be okay. Just from looking at the fronds here, the stems really, you can see where they get their name, Foxtail Firm. They have these long, poofy little stems that come up covered in teeny tiny little bitty leaves. It's really cool, very unique looking. And they'll, sometimes they'll start to spiral a little bit and that looks really neat as well makes a really good, I mean, a foreground plant, not necessarily a ground cover, but it will be a ground cover because they spread very, very vigorously. They do bloom, which is another thing, sets them apart from a true fern. It's midsummer, I think they're very small white flowers. They put out berries, all of that's poisonous, so keep away from it, don't eat it. The foxtail ferns add a, kind of like an architectural element to the garden. Wherever you put them, it tends to draw the eye in. They stand out very well because they sort of have, have the like clean lines. And like I said, they'll start to spiral and they just look neat. Very fun, unique plants. They do not like the cold. They're hardy zones nine and up. So they can take like a very brief, brief, brief cold in the winter months as long as things are more on the dry side. They will potentially die back to the ground if things get too intense. Maybe we'll come back with some winter protection. And I have seen these in like the warmer parts of zone eight. One of the growers I used to bring plants up from that was down in 8B and a lot of their palms would come up with foxtail ferns coming out from the bottoms of the earth, well, the tops of the soil. They're vigorous. They will grow wherever, wherever they can, they will pop up. They'll do well in part shade to full sun. Where you have your plants situated is kind of key. So if you live someplace where it's getting into the triple digits, Fahrenheit, obviously, and they're maybe near pavement or something like that, then that probably wouldn't be a good idea to put it in full sun, right? I tend to like my foxtail ferns where they get about six hours of morning sun and then filtered light throughout the rest of the day. It just keeps them a little bit more on the green side. When they get lots and lots and lots of sun, their fronds get to be a little bit more of a pale green, which is still pretty. I just, I kind of, I like the darker green a little bit more. That's just a matter of preference. They can take that full sun, which is especially true if you get them potted up into a nice, well-drained, organically rich potting mix. Or your garden soil. They can take some drought, but having a soil that holds onto a little bit of moisture is helpful, but not sopping wet. Really though, these are sturdy, sturdy plants when grown outdoors. I haven't really watered this very much at all. My sprinklers get it but not very well <laughs> because i kind of placed it where the sprinklers wouldn't hit it too heavily so like i said they're very tough it is easiest to propagate these by division they have pretty aggressive little runners tubers down in the root mass of these plants and take a clean knife divide them up this one's not ready to be divided up so i can't really demonstrate that it's still just kind of one big sturdy plant in the ground or in a larger pot it would start to spread and then i like i said i would go in just lift it out and cut it into probably three pieces is when I would start dividing when I think I could get it into three chunks. You can divide them in half. That's not going to hurt them. They can take a lot. When you have these and you divide them up, they take back over very quickly. They fill back out very quickly. 
it's not a plant that necessarily likes to be root bound, but they tolerate it for a, a pretty long time. But if it gets to a point with the plant where you're watering it and it doesn't seem to be getting hydrated or you see roots coming out the top of the pot or out the bottom of the pot, probably time to go ahead and repot that plant and bump it up at least one to two inches in size around the diameter of the pot. In the ground, divide them when they're taken over. When they start to grow outside the lines where you don't want them, just, you can just go in with a shovel, pull them up, spread them out, move them, whatever, they can take it. In the summer months, I do water my foxtail ferns. I try and, or not water, fertilize. <laughs> of course, water them. I fertilize them roughly every other week with a 50% diluted all-purpose fertilizer. I don't use anything special with them. It, they're just, they don't really need it. From my experience, anyways, every climate's a little bit different. Soils are different and whatnot. Mine's still in its nursery. Can I just have it kind of sitting someplace where you can't see that nursery pot? That just makes it easier for me to lift the plant and bring it inside during the winter time. So, indoor care with the foxtail fern. Not as simple at all. The indoors, they're going to want more humidity. I mean, they like humidity outside. It's just provided to them more naturally outdoors. It's best to give them a daily misting to have them someplace nice and humid and very, 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 very bright. At least five hours of direct light a day. You can go less than that. They can handle it. But if you want them to continue a little bit of growth during the winter months, they're going to need light. This isn't like some of my other house plants. I'm talking about my experience here. Some of my other house plants where they kind of just sort of sit still and chill during the winter time. No, it's like these sort of want to grow. They don't want to grow like crazy, but enough to the point where I have to stay on top of watering them. There are other plants like the Jerkanias and things where I don't give them quite as much light and I just sort of let them relax. I still water them and everything, but no fertilizing. I don't fertilize my foxtail ferns during the winter time either because it can encourage them to grow a lot faster than they probably should be. If you fertilize a plant during the winter months and they're not getting the proper light and heat to have them in that form of active growth that the fertilizer is telling them that they should be in, you can end up with like really awkward, long, extended, spindly growth. It's just not really a good look. The main thing with them though in the house is providing that humidity because if they don't have the humidity, they will drop these little teeny, teeny, tiny, little bitty leaflets everywhere. Very, very, very messy. When I have grown my foxtail ferns inside year round, I only water them ugh, probably like once a week. I watered them whenever about the top two inches of the surface soil started to dry out. That just seemed to be the lucky spot for me in my house. It's not like a maiden hair fern or just a lot of other ferns in general where they're going to throw an absolute fit and just basically die on you if you miss a watering, but there can be some uh, browning tips and whatnot from not enough moisture, from not enough humidity, yellowing. Sometimes it starts off as yellowing and then turns into browning. Or if there's too much water, then those little leaflets will start to turn yellow in general, usually from the base of the plant and up, and those will fall all over the place. And this is why I do not grow foxtail ferns in my house ever. I keep them in my garage in my little grow space during the winter time, but with the toxicity and everything and my pets, it's just not really worth the risk to me. And I really don't have many windows in my house anymore now that the trees have grown. The windows don't put out quite enough light to keep these looking right. Oh, and if you do have a nice sunny location in your house where you can keep these, don't forget to rotate those pots. Say probably every two weeks, rotate them so that you have nice even growth and everything isn't just going in one direction. Also very easy to prune. If they have any dead or dying foliage in here, any dead fronds, you can go in and just cut those right out. It's not going to hurt the plant. When they get old enough like this, a lot of times they'll just pull right out really easily. Anything that's in here that's browning or anything like that, it's not going to do the plant any good, so it may as well just get rid of it. To my knowledge, there aren't any pests that are like really specifically horrible with the foxtail ferns or on the foxtail ferns, but one thing I will say is that if you grow your plants like I do and you keep them outside during the summer months and bring them inside during the fall and winter, it, you really have to just blast the foliage out with your hose. Do that a few times. Maybe get in there with some neem because there are so many nooks and crannies inside of this foliage for everything to hide. So, you know, if you do end up with some type of little bug problem with it, it's gonna be a pain to get rid of because they, like I said, they have so many little hiding places in there. So I'll just be like blasting with water and absolutely soaking it with neem before I bring it inside. Happy Fern Friday, everybody. I know, not really a fern. Hope that doesn't bug people. But like I said, that's the common name. So I just figured this was a plant I want to talk about. And 
when else would I do it? If I did it some other time, people would be like, well, why is this isn't Fern Friday, right? It's fine, don't worry about it. Comment down below, any input you have for the Fern is always greatly appreciated. Get a conversation going with each other, it's fun watching everybody talk, and I love hearing from everybody, so just say hi. I have all my social media linked down below, that's a good place to get a hold of me. I use Instagram way more than anything else. That's a pretty good place to get a hold of me if you have any questions or just want to see updates on the plants in the garden, just stop by, say hello. And don't forget to like the video, give it a thumbs up, makes a big difference for the video and for the channel, I really do appreciate it, so thank you for that. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell because I upload multiple times a week and that way you'll know when new videos come out. I just love all the little tips, all those cute little tips, they're so cute. Okay, of course, as always and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye!